no, I am not in my boxers. All right, so the Threadripper processor is an extreme, over-the-top, very uh, pricey processor, as you may know. And it needs and requires special motherboards, which usually is a perfect opportunity for manufacturers to produce and propose over-featured, over-the-top, very, very pricey motherboards to run it. Usually. Because Gigabyte is trying to change that by proposing the cheapest Thread Reaper motherboard on the market, keeping the very core features which allows you to run the Thread Reaper processor uh, up to its very natural limits. And today we are reviewing the X399 Aorus Pro, which comes with very high expectations and the pretension of competing against motherboard, which are easily going at twice its nominal price. How does it do it? And does it fare well? Those are the questions we are going to try to answer today, right after this. When you are running a 32 physical core processor, um, you better get your motherboard right, because if you don't, your Threadripper will rip you a brand new socket if you catch my drift. So let's dig right in. The X399 Iros Pro comes in a surprisingly and deliciously compact ATX form factor, meaning 24.4 cm wide for 30.5 cm large. And that is an instant kudos for me. I love the fact that this otherwise larger uh, than life processor and build uh, will be able to go in more compact ATX chassis, which completely uh, goes with the philosophy of a budget motherboard since the ATX chassis are usually much cheaper than the EATX one. I think you get what I mean. It boasts the enormous 4094 pins TR4 Foxconn socket, which can both support the first and second generation of AMD Threadripper processors. VRM-wise, we have what we would need to correctly operate any kind of Threadripper. Namely, we have eight 50 amp CPU phases. And without being too little, uh, it's not that it's not overkill either. It's gonna be able to run perfectly your first and second generation of Threadripper processor, even the ones with 32 physical core count, up to their very natural limits. But when it comes to overclocking, when you have only eight um, phases, you are going to run into some thermal throttling on the higher core count processor, simply because there's not so much uh, surfaces to dissipate the extra heat. And so you have to keep this in mind. But that really doesn't bother me. Because anyway, the Thread Reaper processor is a very bad overclocker. It works beautifully at, at uh, uh, stock clock, but as soon as you're gonna try to overclock it, it doesn't do that well. It's very unstable and usually crashes very, very quickly. So it really doesn't bother me. And it makes sense in that kind of budget-minded configuration. Hitsings wise, we are talking about large, heavy, thick, premium fin configured heatsinks. They were extremely efficient at radiating away any kind of excess heat. So kudos to Gigabyte for that premium touch on an entry level motherboard. Memory wise, our board comes with a quad channel configuration supporting up to 128 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM, overclockable up to 3.6 gigahertz. My only real critic here is the lack of space between the TR4 socket and the DIMM RAMs. And indeed, if you're gonna go for a fan cooler on this board, I'm afraid uh, that it will be obstructing the first DIMM slots on each side of the processor. But in the same time, it is uh, a price I'm willing to pay in order to keep the ATX form factor. So, a good trade-off. Saying in the memory, this board supports up to three M.2 solid-state drive sticks, all directly connected to the CPU, which can all transfer up to 32 gigabit per second. And note that only the smallest of them has a rather good quality and thick padded thermo shield, which should help it radiating away any excess heat and therefore keep it from thermo throttling too often. And this is why I would suggest that uh, this is where you would put your boot device if you want to boot from uh, from an M.2 solid 
Vista Drive. Expansion-wise, we have five 16-slot third-generation PCI Expresses, which can run at different speeds. And since we are dealing with processors which have the highest amount of PCIe lanes on the market, there is no surprise in seeing two 16-bus speed slots, which can support either a single or dual GPU configuration at optimal performances. Now, these two can deliver a very respectable eight full bus speed, meaning that we can run up to four video cards, four video cards, SLI or Crossfire on this motherboard. And yeah, that, that will probably transform your gaming experience of Tetris. And finally, our last PCIe has been capped at for bus speed. Also note that because these two slots are the only ones delivering 16 bus speed and therefore most likely to carry the heavy weight of our video cards, they have been metallically reinforced. Always a good idea. Back eye wise, let me start by noticing uh, the lack of integrated uh, plate. And something I really like to see even on budget boards, I think that, you know, we already have the plate in the box, it doesn't cost that much to add two more screws and to, uh, but it really helps when you're building a new computer to have it already placed. So that's something I really'd like to see on the next iteration of uh, the X399 Aorus Pro. All right, so starting from the left, we have a PS2 keyboard mouse connector, two second generation USB plugs equipped with a DAC up two which will protect your USB connected audio devices from any kind of sound interferences, particularly good for USB audio uh, headsets, microphone and etc. Six, yes, six USB 3.1 first generation plugs, which can all transfer data up to five gigabit per second, two and only two USB second generation plugs, one type A and type C, which can both transfer up to 10 gigabit per second, a rather basic gigabit LAN, and thank goodness, a high and 7.1 channel ALC 12200 codec audio interface supported by excellent WiMAC capacitors. And indeed, I had seen the very same capacitors on the uh, Aorus Z319 Pro Wi-Fi, which I had just had reviewed a couple of weeks ago. You should uh, check right now. And what that does uh, is give us uh, a very good isolation from any kind of sound interferences, but also very uh, deep bass sound, which I really like. And it's present basically on all Aorus motherboards. So somebody in the Aorus engineering team really, really care and like his music. We also have eight third generation SATA plugs, which can all transfer data up to six gigabit per second individually, and which can support RAID 0, 1 or 10. And staying in the IO on our board, we have two USB second generation front panel connectors, a 3.1 first generation USB front panel connector, and a 3.1 second generation type C front panel connector with a full 10 gigabit per second transfer rate. Uh, our X399 Aorus Pro, is surprisingly good given the budget and namely the cheapest motherboard on the market. But if it really wants to pull, uh, put it off and deliver on its high expectations, it really needs to get the, f the enthusiastic features right because without it, your Threadripper experience will be really, really, really crappy. And indeed, the X399 Aorus Pro does deliver brilliantly. We have no less than eight native fan connectors, two of which are full-fledged water pump connectors. We even have a thermistor connector for a more custom temperature monitoring. So indeed, the board can support the most complex um, and crazy custom water cooling configuration out there, single or dual loop. And this is exactly what Gigabyte needed to do for us to take this board seriously. Control and troubleshooting wise, we have a reset switch, a clear CMOS switch, and a power switch, which I find a bit small and I would have loved to see it a little bit bigger and uh, maybe even backlit. It doesn't cost much to do that, really saves you a lot of time when you are dealing with a difficult build. So just something I'd like to see on the next iteration of this board. Most importantly, we do have a QLED screen, which is absolutely crucial in order to quickly diagnose and troubleshoot a boot failure. It is refined and supported by a two-led short debugger, which is uh, here to indicate at what stage of your boot sequence you got stuck. And finally, this board would not be an enthusiast board without at least some RGB options, but I'll warn you right there, um, there's not much in terms of nested RGB on the board. We'll only have one under our uh, chipset heat shield, uh, but I'm not surprised. At some point, Aorus had to make some stark choices 
um, so to deliver something of that kind of quality to that price so having only one RGB strip on that board does not shock me at all especially knowing that we do have three different RGB connectors for RGB exports two classic fusion RGB connectors right here and one addressable RGB fusion connector right there so in conclusion the X399 hours per will cost you about $280 before taxes uh, and depending on the merchant you're gonna go with. That is the cheapest X399 motherboard on the market, full stop. If you are looking for an extremely insanely featured Threadripper motherboard with overkill overclocking and like 16 phases and a bunch of RGB dressing all over the places and, and screens and stuff, and, this is not for you. You're gonna have to spend $150 to $250 more to get where you wanna be. But if you are a first time Threadripper user, if you're going on the budget build, and if you want something who's gonna deliver on absolutely everything the Threadripper processor promises at the minimum possible cost, this is exactly where you wanna be. Gigabyte had to filter everything out, which is not essential to the Threadripper processor and produce something which is this deliciously focused. I love focused motherboard, obviously, and this is a very good example of pure layout and focus build. I mean, sure, there have been some sacrifices. We don't have an integrated shield. There is a very symbolic RGB uh, presence on the board, but these are not vital to the good use and performance of your processor. What Gigabyte really focused their board on is a solid eight phases VRM, thin head sinks, an extended custom water cooling support, a real solid and premium manufacturer, multiple troubleshooting features, a well-furnished IO, soldered buttons, dual BIOS features, and everything you will need to run a proper Threadripper build. And so overall, Gigabyte has done a pretty darn good job at giving us uh, a very good budget Threadripper motherboard. If you're going at below $300 price point for a motherboard, for a Threadripper motherboard, Gigabyte obliterated their competition and there's nothing right now available on the market with that kind of quality. Actually, at $300 below, or below $300, nothing, 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 I think, nothing.